Welcome back to the Fully Reflective Podcast. I'm here with two pretty cool beings, Dr. Charnel and Laura Eisenhower. Uh, Dr. Charnel, I met you through my mom. My mom was like, you got to talk to this lady. She's like, she likes crystals. She talks about stuff that you do. I was like, cool, sounds good. And then shortly thereafter, I was on some kind of a digital panel alchemy ascension situation with this star being Laura. And we recently connected. And um, how are you both doing today? Where are you guys at? What's going on? Doing great. Yeah. Doing good here in Montana. Really pretty awesome winter so far and the sun is shining bright today. <laughs> sun is shining quite bright for me as well. I'm in Sedona. Um, the wind blows and it starts hitting like 40s sometimes so it's chilly but the sun can be out but right now it's like 60s it's pretty nice it's so pretty over there yeah we don't have really winter here i'm in louisiana right now and it did get a little bit cold but cold here is like 30s it did get like 20 something and that's like rare but yeah the sun is shining and it's nice out thanks for having us on today looking yeah, forward thanks, to it. yeah Blessings. So I guess I'm going to give a little framework and then we'll see what the framework takes us. And even if that framework wants to travel with us, we can move forward. But the framework is really the intention of this podcast. Uh, it's called Fully Reflected because as my maturation continued, I noticed that the nature of things was that it was reflected, that our state was always reflected in how our body felt, our sense of identity reflects in how we show up in the world etc cetera, etc cetera. and i found it part of my kind of selfish private bliss to just talk to people about well shit what's your relationship with spirituality what's your relationship with this thing called uh growth and evolution etc cetera, etc cetera. and some you know it goes into like more my mental health and personal well-being kind of style of topics and some go more towards a different, you know, uh, bandwidth that are that you could call esoteric. Esoteric is less common, and exoteric more common. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I would love for the the river of conversation to just kind of flow wherever it wants to take us. I do have one sense of a compass though, um, and it was from some moments on our last on that panel discussion that we had, Laura. That you were you were saying some stuff that. Um, it for me reminded me of a couple of sessions I've had with a joy tish astrologer um, where there's like deep understanding of the yeah esoteric implications of astrology and how it affects our consciousness, how it affects mood states, but then also in the collective. And I think that's a really uh, fun way for both people who are more advanced in their understanding of astrology and the quantum physics of astrology but also uh, folks that maybe aren't super familiar with it, that are maybe more passerby on the topic, but are, but are interested in knowing about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what's going on leads us into, you know, yeah, interpersonal, sometimes governmental conspiracy, and sometimes the quantum mechanics of metaphysics. Um, so I would love to kind of pass you a baton and maybe make it a little bit more general to start and see where it goes, but to say something like, um, what is your, what's your bliss about astrology? What's your, what's your deal? What's your lens there? What's the, what's the bliss compass there that led you there? And how does that show up for you on an active level? Oh, <clears throat> wow. Awesome question. Well, I just started studying it. I don't know, a couple decades ago. Just out of curiosity, I never really like intended to learn astrology and then you know conduct readings. It just kind of happened. I was doing it for friends, and then word of mouth kind of spread, and people are like, "Oh, hey, you know, can you check out my chart?" And I'm like, "Okay, well, you know, I've I've learned a lot, and I've gained enough of an understanding to feel like maybe it's useful for me to uh, assist people in navigating their chart, which to me, you know, holds patterning." It holds patternings that might relate to ancestral patterns where we might hook into societal programmings and patternings that uh, 
limit our ability to go through the initiations that help in our greater awakening. And so looking at a chart kind of helps to see where a person might be struggling with that or where a person might be thriving in that um, while also noticing in the chart how not everybody's gonna be embracing of a person's awakening process and where there's a lot of backlash uh, from friends and family when they see you going down maybe a different road than the status quo or whatever uh, has been passed down in the family lines or, or just in the indoctrination in the school systems. So it just really kind of helps with people kind of struggling with that um, to kind of point out, okay, well, here's where the energy block is. Here's where maybe the insecurity lies. Here's where you might be kind of getting caught in a loop um, to help maybe guide a person into where they can experience a breakthrough and feel confident about the breakthrough. Because sometimes we have breakthroughs, but it can create crisis and we can misunderstand the crisis and project upon it and think it's like a misfortune or we kind of go into self-judgment. Why is this happening? Because there are forces that come out of left field that we don't have a whole lot of control over sometimes. But when we remember that our higher self isn't always uh, accessible when we're kind of caught in ego or lower personality uh, aspects, um, sometimes we forget that the things that seem outside of our control is a part of our higher self or, or our connection to these greater universal forces that it might be a blessing in disguise or like an upgrade. So in these times where there's a lot of psyops and psychological operations and false flags, the way we respond and react, um, I like it as a tool to help people to respond and react from a place of sovereignty instead of the problem reaction solution game that's being played where, okay, a problem gets introduced, we react to it, but we might gravitate towards a false solution that digs us into a deeper hole or a deeper, um, you know, patterning that, you know, just, just kind of sabotages and hijacks our capacity to leverage those adversities to gain more wisdom and life experience to the point where we're actually growing in the face of this kind of adversity. So I feel like it's especially uh, helpful right now to help people to overcome where they're getting caught in these narratives uh, to help them feel empowered when these adversities strike so that they can go the route of um, uh, experiencing that upgrade and initiation that serves the greater good of themselves and the collective. And I like medical astrology because it helps us to understand how the planets impact our organs, our endocrine system and our nervous system and that relationship between these forces and how that flows within our bodies. So, you know, if somebody has a predominance of like water signs, they might process a lot through their emotional body. If somebody has a lot of air signs, they might just be just able to kind of change their thoughts and perspective and not really go into the emotional like turmoil. And then some of the fire signs or might have a predominance in fire signs, you know, might just be quick to anger, but also like fire and passion to just like direct that energy in a positive way. And mostly we all have a mixed bag of earth, air, fire, water. It really depends on the person's chart. But my goal is to help bring people into the zero point unified field so that we're not so ruled by the patternings, but we're able to understand the patternings so that we can evolve and grow instead of endlessly loop in this time loop that we are in. And I'll just kind of leave it at that. Zoom, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, when you say zero point field, what's I have my own lens on it, but what would you say is the difference of, or the just the the similarity of, or syn synonymousness uh, of the term zero point field and Christ consciousness? I I feel the two are very much the same. I feel it's where everything kind of converges into just sort of uh, well, it kind of collapses timelines, artificial timelines, and sub personalities or aspects of ourselves that really get caught in the stuff that's coming at us from outside. And it helps us to be in the now. It helps us to be sort of in that zone of, okay, I can reset, I can find neutrality. I can find that divine center and uh, kind of be in the flow and access that divine innocence and purge out anything that doesn't serve that and respond to life from that higher, you know, Christ consciousness and uh, illumination of divine blueprint of the masculine and feminine being in harmony and balance to where, uh, you know, all these things that yank us and pull us, you know, just kind of like become like neutrify, uh, neutralized 
same with like dark weapons that come at us or any kind of mind control. We can nullify and neutralize these dark weapons when we get into that zero point and into that unified field where we feel a greater connection because we're operating from spiritual integrity. Even if we don't all look at it the same way, um, we're able to respond to life from a greater vibration that can instigate transformation and healing instead of conflict, strife, and drama. And, uh, you know, kind of the stuff that we see even in a truth or communities or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, it's just like taking the higher road and like being able to just kind of like pause, take a breath and access that place of neutrality to be more the observer than constantly yeah. triggered and reactive. So, yeah. I feel it as uh, uh, stages of densities and closeness towards the origin of consciousness there's less density and the further it is into matrix identification or or identification with uh material or anything that gives us sense of self through the material um it's like Eckhart Tolle introduced me to it but the, the term pain body it's like matrix body and the zero point quantum field is really the only place that Christ can live as sentient consciousness I don't sense that as soon as we go into story and narrative, it's like we can bring the Christ light into those places to kind of reclaim. And that's some of the work that I got introduced to is these like soul reclamation type vibes where it's, you know, someone's through a trauma, someone got fragmented into an unconscious pattern identification that they, they layered on stages of, of identity on top of. And they uh, often, probably don't have super high level self-awareness and so i see this kind of connection connective thread of like the zero point quantum field christ consciousness and and really uh you know tactile understanding of one's own astrology you know astrological self like it's really about just understanding your light body and um i, I feel it as bioluminescence so everyone as you said has like different bioluminescent predominant element effulgence effulgence meaning like uh give off or uh, you know off off gassing um the fiery the watery etc and when we're in our pain body we're really none of the elements and i see it as like a psychic mucus so it kind of nullifies the electromagnetic field which is like mm. how consciousness grips onto reality and also plays with it like you know plato you're meant to be a conscious creator here but often in that state of unknowing oneself not knowing of oneself not knowing of one's nature um there's there's these like uh it's it's it is victimization it is the separateness that needs some type of bridge to get back into coherence but um love love the framework that you're speaking from in terms of yeah the uh the astrological kind of quantum field accessing of self because Man, let's let's zoom at that. Actually, you know, I'm sure both of y'all have interfaced with beautiful souls that identify as Christian, and I, for one, have found that you know, Krishna, Christ, same same thing. All right, maybe not as a different dude, maybe, but in terms of Krishna consciousness and Christ consciousness, the same darn thing. And understanding your astrology is understanding your quantum self. You have elemental triggers. You have elemental propensity. You have inclination towards this and not towards that. And understanding that is self-gnosis, self-awareness, jnana yoga, knowledge of self and what is actual, what is real, and then able to be discerning of what is false and not get caught in that. Um, would love to hear if y'all have interfaced with anyone in the yeah, pre predominantly like Abrahamic kind of uh, lensing framework of people that it, maybe, maybe this is the most direct way I could pass the baton because it's something that's coming up in my life often like every couple of months i have one of these really bizarre scenarios with a christian where I, I love them as a person i just love you as a person and then all of a sudden some kind of lens framework gets in the way of understanding and i also see it as a kind of betrayal of what the true essence of the christos is all about and it gets folks in this in our head and stuff like that but um ha have you seen in your work and if so how has it affected you where there's like oh yeah astrology oh it's the devil and it's like almost 
just complete absence of gnosis. There's no gnosis. There's no knowledge. There's no actual information context. It's basically just like a gut wrench reaction based on dogmatic identity complexes. It's not even them. It's not even them. It's like a, it's an identity that's stored in the dogmatic folklore of that culture, um, which I call it tribalism because it's like, man, it's it's uh it's definitely not unity consciousness and even if it is like you said some of the truther groups it's like they take that unity and then make it a tribe that excludes other tribes um well, anyways culture. anyways yes yes so anyways the the baton is yeah have you experienced any of any of that just kind of very rigid non-congruency with things as simple as astrology when it meets up those kind of old frameworks either of you yeah i think pretty much uh, I didn't come from a Christian background, but when I moved to the South from I'm mostly living up North and in Europe, um, you know, I was introduced to Christianity in the religious sense um, down in this area. And I'm not saying that it isn't everywhere. I think it probably is. I just wasn't aware of it because I had my own understanding of Christ from a, an experience that I had at four years old. And just understanding love who is christ and so when i was introduced to a church setting and um i was was very mission-minded and service love centered truth um you know i was brought in and you know kind of went to some of these things and really got caught up in the programming and the you know the built-in structures of what they think christianity is and or their perception of christianity i should say and, um, you know, bought it, you know, hook, line and sinker. I was about 13 years old and that happened. And so, you know, you're surrounded by it. Now my parents weren't, my, my parents actually thought it was a cult, even though it was like very normal, Christian, normal, I guess not normal, but, um, it was, you know, just established religion and they weren't used to it. So they were like, eh, but, um, anyway, um, growing into you know trying to integrate with that of who i am and what my truth is and what i knew and what i you know experienced versus this there was a bit of an integration and then of course there were questions because it was like wait what this is bad horoscopes are bad you know like astrologies you know and then it was just like no 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 right and so but you it wasn't even allowed to be asked or talked about or even music you know music was an issue then or gender and roles of ministry and things like that i think it's hopefully changed a lot now i'm not in those circles anymore but you know i had a mission on to be in service and thought that that would look okay through a ministry situation and i was told when i went to bible school um, you know, you don't have the right body parts to be in this kind of service. And yet it was super fine to be a missionary in China as a woman, but not in the States in this particular, um, religion situation. So I was like, okay, see ya, peace out. I'm over here. I'm going to go do something different. And, you know, the more no's that I got, the more that pushed me to research, look into things. Of course, astrology is in the Bible. And, you know, if you even use a Bible, like that's another whole topic of quantum physics versus just the guidelines versus what Christ is and when it came, how it was interpreted, blah, 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 you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, we were doing like um, sit out type situations where we would like use our intuition to support people on the streets or um you know have dialogue about dreams we set up like dream stations and people could come talk about their dreams and we would um you know help understanding dreams of, so we would know how creator was speaking to us and stuff and they're like oh my god you know that's the devil and it's like or music was the devil or crystals with every evolution of me remembering what true things are to me um there has been a, some pushback in it and it's like okay whatever you know but it hasn't stopped me and it's fine um you know i just at first it was like startling because and i would get frustrated and i want people to see and i would show them the proof and show them where i'm getting resources and you know but then it was just like why get upset or try to make anything i'm not going to be in control 
like situation to force anything. It's like, just let people be where they are and love them. And that isn't going to stop me from keeping on, you know, remembering and connecting with God and me and doing my own path and, you know, just not getting caught up in judgment too, because you can even get so like spiritual that are like, oh, well, I'm over here and you still believe that. Oh my God, that's like effed up or whatever. And, you know, it's like, so it's a fine balance all the time of like constant recalculation, at least for me. And yeah, we do see it even in the truther communities where it's like, literally you just talk to someone who's like all love and light. And then like, you know, next sentence, division, 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 and, or, you know, working with someone uh, on a collab just recently. And like, they would be love, love, love. And, you know, get your oils out, breathe, do some yoga. And then we got on a call and they were like attack and, you know, freak out and psycho. And I was like, wow, that's the opposite. And it happened like three times this week with the same person. And I was just like, I don't know what that is and it's okay, but I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just again, recalculating, 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 remembering and practicing staying in my love and being in that observation without getting pulled in any kind of bait, energetic, emotional, you know, pulls to tug me into something that isn't something that I need to be connected to. And just like staying in that center point, staying in the now, focusing on drinking good juice and exercise and breathing and meditations and, you know, going in, going in and asking, you know, what, what is this about? And if anything does trigger me, you know, okay, where is this coming from? Why, why did this show up? Um, thank you for the gift of being a mirror to me. So I know what still needs healing and requires more love in that situation. And then doing the work to go through those things and see, you know, what's still there that isn't quite full love and making, you know, love be in those spaces that were wounds and allowing God to come in and just say, you know, like touch that, love that, love myself and really get into, uh, you know, forgiveness and just letting it go. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm so good at this. I got fucking trophies all over the house, you know, for how good I am at this, you know, it's, but it's, it's a work and process all the time. And thank God I have like really good friends and people like you guys to discuss and you know just like have a minute and go like this sucks and you know just (laughs) verbalize Laura and I talk all the time and thank God I would lose my shit if I didn't have her as my sister and my friend and you know definitely I've chatted with you a few times too Rocco and it's like you know in the midst of it it's like seemed like the more you go and I'm not saying like again higher or lower I'll just say the more I expand in my love I'm also attracting people who are open to love and open to experience and open to pressing for more expansion of love and healing and that is being magnetized as well so um I I think I hope that kind of helps a little bit what I'm saying I hope that makes sense yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, Laura? Come on. Yeah. No, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I run into that a lot. And when I do presentations or I do like an interview or YouTube that has anything to do with astrology, of course, there's a lot of comments from people uh, that are just completely opposed to it and just growing up, kind of running into the same kind of thing. And it's sort of like saying, you know, the, the learning biology is the devil. I mean, <laughs> And that doesn't make any sense to people. So why is exploration a problem? Um, It's been called a pseudoscience because the more we distance ourselves from self-knowledge, the better in a culture that wants to mind control or brainwash or socially engineer. So if we start to become empowered and gain self-knowledge, a lot of people don't like that. It's very threatening. Um, And the thing is, anything connected to the so-called devil is going to show up in the astro chart in relation to the negative Saturn energies or blocked Saturn energies um, that relate to tyranny, control, and misuse of power and authority. Whether we're the one that is pushing that towards others or we're uh, recovering from those kind of traumas in our past, you know, it, it, it's going to show that darker element, just like with Tarot, one of the archetypes is the devil card. So 
um, it addresses that whole concept of, uh, you know, where um, we might be operating from, you know, a, a, a dark place. So I don't know why people are demonizing things when there is uh, pedophilia in the church, there is child trafficking, human trafficking that exists in the underbellies of some of these places. And a lot of uh, victims and people have come forward about their stories. And yet that's not alarming to them. You know, it's kind of like, oh yeah, well, that's just like a weird instance and I, I'm sure that's gonna be taken care of, but, but, but it doesn't quite break the trance. For some it does, but for others it doesn't. And I'm not saying that anybody that's a part of a religion is part of that. There's a lot of well-intentioned people that are in these groups and religions, but you know, to me, evil has nothing to do with the things that we explore. It has to do with the actions we take and the kind of person we are. Are we a person of integrity or are we all about deception, manipulation and causing harm to others? Um, so, you know, people should be more focused on that than being concerned about the things that we might want to explore to help us know ourselves better, to be healthier, to be more conscious and mindful. Um, because when we're not connected with our truth frequency and we don't understand these things, we're kind of on autopilot and we end up with all sorts of diseases and conditions and ailments that we don't quite fully understand. And it's important for us to you know, understand it. Now, yes, people can misuse astrology, but they can misuse a kitchen knife. <laughs> They can misuse an altar. They can misuse, you know, pretty much anything. Anything mm -hmm. can be turned into uh, a tool for manipulation. Even the words that come out of our mouth can either destroy people and hurt people or activate people and inspire them and heal them. So, you know, should we be afraid of ourselves and our mouths? Because, you know, it, it has just as much of a potential of being a dangerous thing or a beneficial thing, depending on what kind of person we are. So people need to just like not drain themselves and waste their time, you know, trying to like be involved in this kind of like showdown and battle and be more concerned about, you know, can we all agree to have mutual love and respect and to be individuals of integrity and to appreciate our differences so that we can harmonize those differences. And then in that greater love frequency, we can begin to break down the programs and the things that divide and conquer us so that we're just really, um, you know, it's not about right or wrong. I have no judgments to anybody who's religious and nobody should have any judgments for me to be more maybe sovereign in my spirituality and exploring um, different tools and modalities uh, that help me to uh, avoid like the medical industry and where I'm gonna be taken advantage of because the initiations are too much. I don't wanna go on their drugs. I don't want a doctor to tell me what's going on with me. I do appreciate it in times of emergency or like broken bones or, you know, there, it's certainly got its place, but if it doesn't start to dissolve that conventional um, mentality and it doesn't begin to explore consciousness and holisticness, then uh, this division is not serving any of us. And, you know, let's just put our heads together. Uh, and that's what I feel these times are about and what the growth period is about on the planet. And um, but people are really getting caught in those narratives to the point where the survival chakra is so lit up that they can't even think straight. It's just fight or flight. And uh, we need to just take a deep breath and realize that as we overcome these adversities, um, we're gonna get to know ourselves better and reach a higher frequency and dimensional level of consciousness to the point where we can't really be harmed by any kind of dark technology, bio weapon or virus at the end of the day. Um, it can it can be a cattle <clears throat> it can catalyze you know something huge and we shouldn't be threatened um you know by our differences either and uh i'd love to zoom in on something yeah. right there right there yeah i'll stop there because i could ramble yeah. on may, may, may i zoom in on uh, there's this part that i feel like you have really cool context on because uh, it's come up for me as conversation point because so how the word saturn became satan to me is part of the whole it's it's Maya's or Eden's uh, kind of most tricky veil of like they make a you know these power structure kind of I mean we, man there's several things that I'm feeling like I would like to love, love to zoom in on with you but specifically like how Saturn is basically so I see Saturn as time space literally it's four dimensional and it it is kind of Chronos and space of Maya. But in this specific reference to Saturn, it's not like Sophia. Sophia is kind of like the recognition that there's a positively oriented uh, goddess, almost like an Isis, almost like a Ma'at, that's governing the, the wisdom of the material world. And it's, and it's quite, I quite feel, feel that as a literal essence signature. Saturn isn't that essence signature. Saturn is the space in which 
we're pointing at. And it's a, uh, there's this there's this phrase that came a while back was like uh we don't want to worship saturn but we don't want to be on bad terms with it whereas like the oldie these oldie folks that you know i kind of see them as like the 13 bloodlines that kind of like won the battle of pisces it's like after roman warfare yeah these people seem to have won um or at least in the world of Saturn and, and, and wealth, you know, accumulation and then kind of d dominion over the others, hyper segment, you know, identity spectrum. Um, they're the ones that ended up over here, which I also see as just karmic reflection of our growth and spiraling evolution into more and more and more of what it is that we are. But it's like, uh, yeah, can you speak on anything with that? Like Saturn as a Greek, like Roman, uh, I'm not sure what your history, you know, uh, context is but like i think that's an interesting glitch especially when i interface with people who identify as christian um they they see satan as like a literal horned instrument of the worst things possible but every time i listen i'm listening i'm like man they're just they're just not integrated with saturn they, they have something that they're they're repressing from their own being that has something to do with rules order time uh boundary setting um, and their own shadow hasn't been integrated to the extent at which they have to make it uh, dot, dot, dot. What do you got for the Saturn to Satan kind of concept? Okay, I'll, I'll keep it short and hear Sharon on how to say it. Okay, so Saturn used to be considered like a sun. And in just some of the events that took place in our ancient history and galactic history, uh, it became somewhat dark. The Saturn moon matrix is a dark technology system where the rings of Saturn are sort of an artificial, uh, uh, like it, it beams sort of an artificial frequency that impacts our junk DNA and keeps us sort of unconscious and it impacts the moon and the artificial nature of the moon to the point where it creates this imbalance of the masculine and feminine that gets cast down upon the planet. And that's where we see kind of like patriarchy, misuse of power, tyrannical control and uh, suppression of the feminine and where the energies of the feminine are very caught in um, just sort of its own uh, program and loop. And so we can begin to break that when we understand the higher octaves of Saturn, which represent self-mastery and becoming a teacher. We have to get over the trials and tribulations of the false or dark Saturn um, that seeks to have control over us and regain the control by becoming masters in the face of all these obstacles. Um, and when we, we become the master or have self-mastery over these sort of things, and we say, wait a second, I don't want to follow those rules. Those don't make sense. It's very repressive. It actually hurts me, or this is abusive. When we get over that sort of lower dark Saturn um, and we gain self-mastery, then the law of structure, which is what Saturn rules, which rules the skeletal system and our teeth and just the structure and the structures of life, that structure is able to hold the multidimensional and the spiritual. It's a structure that is able to accommodate the fullness of all that we are to the point where we can restore the tree of life, have a root system, have a certain level of structure, but it's expansive and it reaches into you know, all these other things. And, and, and until we begin to unlock those keys and uh, move through these fences and get over this false authority and gain self-authority so that we can have disciplines and responsibilities that are ruled by Saturn, but ones that serve us, you know, it might be a better diet, it might be getting more exercise, it might be some kind of discipline that helps us to maintain uh, spiritual health and well-being. Healthy um, boundaries. Doing it on our own terms instead of, you know, but there is not like there, there are other teachers out there that are all about tyranny and control. So we have to have the right authority and guidance so that we can step into um, how we relate to Saturn. And what they're trying to do is just keep us in enslavement. And a lot of people that are teachers or in positions of authority are running those narratives to keep that system of control alive. And it's our job as humans to overcome that so that we can utilize Saturn for the gifts that it offers and get out of that dark Saturn, Satan um, enslavement kind of agenda. Boom. Charnel? You're muted, Charnel. So part of a self mastery has to do with integration and also ownership. So integration, I like that word integrate or integration because it means to be integrated or integrity, mind, body, and spirit to be in righteousness, but which righteousness can be 
as like, oh, you're so righteous and ego, but I don't mean it. I mean it in the real sense of being in right standing, mind, body, and soul integrated integrity. That's where integrity comes from. And with self-mastery, part of self-mastery is being integrated and taking ownership of our own responses, our own choices, and the consequences of that, whether, you know, whatever karma, good or bad. And I think that with Saturn, there is a taught and confinement of responsibility to this outer thing to like put all the blame on the devil made me do it or that stupid devil or, oh my God, this is happening. So it's gotta be the devil instead of like, what did I do to create this? You know, what kind of choices brought this to my plate? What am I mirroring? What is- It's like, it's like the ultimate victimhood idea. Yes, yes. And so Saturn creates a dependency if it's in the wrong way. And it teaches that- we don't have responsibility to have responsibility is to be responsible. And when we can take ownership and say, you know what, I effed up and, or I'm going to do that differently next time or whatever, and own every single thing that shows up in us and around us, because everything around us is a reflection of what's in anyway. And we all have a DNA that is expressing, radiating a signature code that comes from maybe genetics and, or whatever experiences we had whatever we're thinking, what we're talking about, what we're feeling, all of that is what's radiating and what's magnetizing back. So when we're, um, you know, stuck or in dependence mode, and then also taught and programmed that, oh, that's not you, that's the devil. And we should do spiritual warfare, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I I gotta jump in. This is, this is important because it's like, it's like people that are dependent on God as a separate reference point from themselves they'll forever be able to say that the devil is against them and God is for them. When those two points are really molecularly right next door to each other, when, what, that is the integrity, at least when I'm pointing at that, it's like, man, that's, that's like a staple of separation consciousness. Or as, as it keeps getting reframed in my system, it's like separation, separation emphasis because their style of consciousness emphasizes their separateness. Well, it's like heaven and hell too, like the whole concept of heaven yeah, and hell. Yeah, it's other places, yes. When it's all within, everything is in. Everything's within and then everything was in is what reflects out, which brings more back to us, which goes out. And then there's this ripple effect of those rings uh, if it's in the negative, but we can overcome that. We can be, we can be self-mastered and we can rise above and we can be sovereign and we can make better choices and be response-able to create something different because karma is just a science. That's it. Like, and God and us is the compass of all of that. And when we remember and give more space to God, then guess what? We have different patterns. And when we have different patterns, then we have more room for expansion and love to radiate to other people and create more good things, whether music and fun and children and babies and life and you know inventions and books and songs and you know just being god in action it's fun when when we choose for it to be fun you know if we want to get stuck and sucked into whatever programming and crash course you know brainwashing or whatever then of course we're going to just loop and loop and loop and loop and loop until you get so big that we're like god i hate this and when you get sick of it literally sometimes, then a lot of times people will make those choices. But I prefer to not wait until something really bad happens to have to make those choices. Like, why not start now and just like do it now so those things don't have to happen to force you to make those choices. But sometimes pain is an awesome teacher. And I, you know, so I'm always, when I'm aware, trying to be aware that, oh, okay, what is this about? What's happening? what am I creating? What's coming to me? You know, um, looking at everything, even if it sucks as a gift, because a gift not received becomes a burden. If we're not seeing every single situation as a gift, then it could feel like sucky and I hate this. And then that causes more stuff and we're not, we're missing the lesson. So, you know what I mean? (laughs) Amen. Yeah. Um, Speaking of integration, um, you know, it's, first hand first point you know first basis 
uh, I would love to share mine as well. What What's like a predominant lesson that you're learning right now? Or, or something that's active in your field of like, okay, yeah, like I know, I know this is, yeah, um, but like this is that, this is happening. And it's definitely, it's bringing me to my edge of sorts. Um, Y'all want, want me to go or you want to go? You go. Go for it. So one that's happening for me, and it feels like it's so far been this like theme of 22 so far, which it was like towards the end of 21, I started noticing. And it was even a theme kind of connected to 21, which was like, it was asking me to stay in the in-between. And it would be so tempting to like choose one place or choose the other. But sometimes my, my system would get guided to staying in the in-between and, and kind of needing to be willing to miss out on a space or the other, because there's some very special thing that I was meant to observe or listen to become aware of that I couldn't access if I was in either of those spaces. So it's about staying in the middle. And so it's kind of coagulated into 22 where it's like, there's a space in between the acceptance and the resisting of a certain reality happening. And on like a realistic level, we were supposed to go to this trip and then like uh, the flight got canceled. And then one of the people that was gonna come on the trip dropped out and then thought it was COVID and then we got sick. And we're like, man, were, were we like missing the signs? And it was like, we were on the way to do this trip. We're so glad that we did it. But there have been several of these little moments on the way that really make you check in and be like, am I doing the right thing here? Is this the right path? And in that, it's not kind of asking for like a pat on the bat or total rejection of it. So this lesson that feels like it's integrating in my system, in my field right now, is something along the lines of like not jumping to conclusions no matter what. Even while the, inf the intel is, is like streaming in and it looks like enough information to like be like, yeah. Um, it's like be yeah, but be ready to adjust it. It's like, yeah. don't be so rigid, even if it's like, no, I'm pretty sure the sky is blue. No, I'm like, yeah, the sky is blue. No, the sky is definitely, I'm looking at it, it's blue. But, but having some kind of like, it's a sensitive, nuanced, little like safe haven in between any decision, in between any assumption being made, it's, it's, it's zero point. I, I feel like it's kind of a, a lesson leading me more into, into zero point stillness in the face of really options and timeline seemingly to collapse like oh i wanted that timeline to happen oh shucks oh wow it's back so it's like not not basing it on of any information that's coming through the sense basically is a kind of lesson i'm learning so good really good yeah well, you want to go ahead sure? yeah no no that's huge uh just knowing how to respond in the moment and i mean and and yeah, when I was kind of talking about like when things come out of left field, sometimes we feel, oh, that's a misfortune or why is this happening or this isn't working out because we're attached to an outcome. Mm -hmm. And if we can be a little bit more flexible and fluid, sometimes the unexpected brings things we didn't like, you know, it, it, it brings things that uh, are more beneficial than not. But if we're focused on the perception that it's a misfortune, then we're only going to notice the things that reinforce the fear and anxiety to the point where we start to stray away from the open mindedness to what an event might produce to the fact that our third eye or whatever is able to perceive the synchronicities and the things that are actually falling into place. And that's happened so much just in my wilderness adventures and just traveling, you know, where something might not go right. But if I let go, something actually beyond like I uh, like ends up happening. You run into somebody that you haven't seen in a long time. Something begins to fall into place and you end up maybe getting a hotel room and catching the flight the next day. And you have the most unbelievable, you know, thing happen. It happened to me in Italy. And I look, you know, like walking down the street in Florence and my favorite band of all time, Adrian Blue's playing. And uh, I got VIP passes and only two people had the VIP passes and we got to hang out. It's just like, where did that come from? So, but if no. I was like, man, you know, this sucks and like, it's costing me money. And like, then I wouldn't be able to perceive the things that are saying, Hey, you know, because you have an open mind, because you can see through this lens or perception of openness, instead of like frustration and anxiety to the fact that, you know, I'm only seeing things to reinforce it. I miss out on a, a incredible moment um, that 
I feel comes from our higher self and just our connection to source, universal forces, cosmic natural law, whatever. Um, but I think what I'm working on right now is that when there's a glitch in a friendship or a misunderstanding, that I don't let it derail me to the point where I read into it or I go into like, you know, oh, I'm going to be abandoned or I'm not loved. or And I just find that center where I'm like, okay, it's okay. You know, maybe this isn't the time to work it out. I have to just stay integrated within myself and um, see where I might have contributed to a conflict um, and be understanding of where that person might have been coming from. Maybe they weren't at their best and maybe, you know, and just to stay in that vibration of compassion, understanding and forgiveness for the self and the other so that when we do come together and put our heads together to resolve it, it's not like, oh, let's fight and battle it out and see, you know, and, and have this game of who's right and who's wrong, or I'm a victim to you, or you're trying to control me, um, that in these moments that uh, it can bring about a greater union um, versus greater division. And that's what I'm hoping to see when, you know, Charnel was referring to, you know, like, oh, let's be light and love and like not go into these lower realms. But in the next sentence, it's like right back down there, a bit condescending and a little bit uh, contradictory. So that kind of stuff I'm always working on um, to, to, to uh, I don't want to say the word needy, but um, to just be able to, you know, sit with myself in the face of misunderstandings without letting it bring up all my wounds and all the past stuff that uh, just makes it hard to want to show up and makes me just want to crawl into a ball and not get out of bed. <laughs> that Beautiful. so for me that was really good laura um both of you guys uh, for me i'm using these new year energies to really reflect on what happened last year what is good for me what was bad for me what drained my energy maybe it didn't drain my energy before but it does now you know like you said Rocco like paying attention to every little thing and checking in all the time um really looking at relationships and even if I'm super loyal and like someone as a friend and love them and respect them where they're at um maybe doing some adjustment with with collaboration or how I'm doing things with who I'm working with or who I'm hanging out with just because it's a different season and there's some, maybe some things aren't lining up and that has been a little bit sucky because I'm super loyal and, um, you know, letting go in some ways or just reframing, um, the definitions of partnership and or friendships just a little bit for my own self, um, has been, uh, you know, a, an interesting thing right now in this transition, but, um, you know, not taking it personal when things aren't exactly the way I hope they are, or the way I thought they were, or that perception of what I, you know, maybe I thought it was bigger than it was, and it really wasn't, and went good or bad, and just being really careful and mindful that, you know, there can be some shifts, and it's okay, and it's fine, and, um, you know, I think something else, too, that I've been recognizing in communities is like this, this like terminology of psychology to be like, you know, I'm using my boundaries, you know, but really it just is ghosting someone completely without actually bring, you know, having a conversation, a healthy conversation of going, you know what, um, you're, you think this way and I'm cool. And this is what I think. And that's cool. And we're just going to go separate ways and like work it out instead of just being like all over Facebook or whatever, you know, I'm putting my boundaries out and not working with so-and-so anymore and looking all light and love and blah, blah, blah. But really like people won't know that you really cut off all relationship. You're not answering the phone or talking to this person anymore. And I'm not saying that there isn't a need to do that sometimes if there's been like narcissistic abusive situations, but a lot of these times that I'm looking at, it's like people do want to talk and they're like, what happened? And they don't even know. And they do, you know, would prefer a healthy conversation and not just being like, you know, cut off and blocked and whatever. So, um, you know, being aware with me of, of two, not being that person that's just being like uh, avoiding, you know, it's like, no, I'm not going to just block and avoid and call it sovereignty or call it boundaries. I'm going to actually take the courage and the time, even if it hurts and have a, a conversation or hear where someone's at and see what the lesson is in that and then hopefully observe that in other places too but but yeah I'm paying attention to my body too 
you know, going back to that draining thing, it's like, what, what's draining me? Who's draining me? You know, and, you know, cause when we are on a physiological chemistry level on, you know, coming from my background as a doctor and just knowing what happens when we live true, there are chemicals that saturate our cells that cause us to be like Superman and like do, you know, lift a car off a burnt, you know, a baby or whatever, you know, we, we get these like surges of immunity, peace, strength, you know, metabolism, all of this, when we're checking in and we're always following the compass of what's North for me, um, you know, my North may not be your North and that's okay. So not judging and a competition of where the North is and why are you doing that? And I can't, and all of that mess, but also just staying true to you, letting people be where they are in their truth and doing what they are not like being like shame on you for you doing your truth, you know, and just, but staying in my lane, doing this, paying attention and knowing that if it's draining me, then it's probably not my truth right now. And maybe look for the things that give me like a boost and life, because when we're living a lie, um, whether it's in a certain job or partnership or collaboration or where you live or who you're hanging out with, then you have the opposite. You have 1500 chemicals that saturate your body that F with your, you know, wrinkles in your skin and your metabolism, you gain weight, you know, you, you don't sleep well, you know, it causes dis-ease in the body, you know, living a lie is the fastest way to get super fat, super old, you know, <laughs> all the terrible things, you know, super sick. So um, I'm just tightening the belt a little bit for myself in this time. That's my lesson right now. I'm just like really, really being cognitive and feeling, checking in with my body on where, what's feels good for me. Beautiful. Amen. Sounds like the way. <laughs> um, well, beautiful. We're almost nearing uh, 60 minutes. I was feeling like I would, I would love to know what's lighting you both up individually. Like what's something that you're, you're really lit up about. It's inspiring you that, um, quick, uh, shameless plug of the context and the framework. Um, Charnel knows probably a little bit more than, than you, Laura, but, uh, a book is being written through me called moon theory. And my thesis is that FOMO is the only cause of depression, suicide, and, anxiety and identity crisis. FOMO is a misunderstanding or a quick hashtagable version of separation. FOMO is separation emphasis and it causes that split identity reality, split timelines, split uh, inability to coalesce as the divine self in union with all. Um, and so this harmony kind of remedy for missing out is don't miss out basically, but miss, missing out on nothing means moon. Moon what? The light. What light? There's only one uh, if you're coming from your high heart. And so saying that to say, um, what are y'all most interested in not, I, I, I phrase it like this often, it's like, what are you unwilling to miss out on right now? What are, what are some things that are really lighting you up? And then specifically with the, with the framework of um, like, you know, if you were to dip from this dimension, you know, in five hours, what is what is the key code that you have found amongst all of the matrixian shenanigans? And it's 2022. Who knows what kind of you know uh, charade shenanigans we're gonna get thrown as a as a reality? As a this just in, it's real. You should really worry about it. Extra, extra. Um, amongst all of those, what what have you found? So it's a two two pronged baton. What are you what are you working with right now? And I kind of feel like it's the same thing. Also. What are you working with right now? What's lighting you up? But also what's that major key code that you found, either of you know recent or your ultimate key code, specific, specifically for any indigos out there, any any millennials out there that are watching this or other other you know time period oriented souls in a body waking up to the truth of what is. Um, what's that key code that you got for them and what's lighting you up right now? Uh, Laura first and China. Okay, awesome. And that's so cool about your book and what an incredible thing to bring forth. So important in these times. I would say what's really lighting me up is uh, there's just major 
disclosures coming in that haven't previously been there before that are going to create a lot of clarity in, in regards of um, what could potentially be false narratives, disinfo, and plants, or people that aren't fully operating um, in an authentic way. Perhaps there's alters. Perhaps they're still under some sort of you know control. Can you um, sprinkle? Can, can, can you sprinkle a little? What are those? Can you sprinkle a little of what the, what they are? Well, I mean, I kind of hold things at arm's length. I don't create fixed beliefs. I have an open mind. So I'm very careful of like, oh, well, that sounds so good. So all of a sudden I'm just going to like believe it. But I am just excited to explore what this person is bringing forth with just discernment and um, just, uh, you know, just caution. Um, and it's a senior advisor to the Earth Alliance um, who's helping to bring clarity to events that took place in Eisenhower's administration and uh, the development of the Earth Alliance and the White Hats and uh, communication with sphere beings um, that are looking to assist humanity without kind of doing it for us. So there's a lot of clarity and a lot of answers and it feels really encouraging, but at the same time, I'm very careful and discerning um, and I'm not just gonna jump all over it, but I think uh, there's gonna be a lot that comes from that. Um, so yeah, cause there's so, so many question marks. Uh, and, and, and what I like is just being part of the greater conversation where we can lay it all out on the table and through just like maturity and humility, have these greater discussions with folks like you and, uh, friends like Michael Saul and Dan Willis to just like really look at it and see where the dots connect and find questions to where the dots don't connect so that maybe we can begin to piece this puzzle together. But I'm also, um, embracing of the accepting of the greater mystery, you know, maybe not having all the answers and being okay with that. Um, Cause it gets very exhausting. And uh, I like to embrace the mystery and just really enjoy what it means to be human um, and be connected to the earth and connected with spirit and go through all the different uh, initiations and cycles that are presenting themselves without getting caught in the weaponization of it or the manipulation of it to where uh, disempowerment is being thrown in our face and giving our power away and buying into, you know, this outer stuff. So I would say the key code for me is always to uh, sort of like understand um, the stuff that gets thrown at us and that people are struggling with. The flip side of it is where we can gain strength. Um, if they're trying to undermine something, it's probably because an activation is coming through that is strengthening the particular part of ourselves that they're looking to target. You know, so if it has to do with like speaking truth, there's going to be censorship and maybe the symbology of like the mask, even though I feel it has its place because there is a virus and I understand people's need to protect themselves. It's not about like choosing right or wrong either. It's really respecting where people are at and finding like a middle ground somehow. Um, because there's always like sometimes truth that's distorted. Uh, and that's where we come in. Is it our truth though? Does it really resonate with our intuition? And how can we work with um, being hit with, you know, things that are helpful and supportive to us and things that um, are a detriment and looking to, you know, harm us? And can we bring it into the zone where we can uh, access our intuition and our greater truth to be able to navigate through the madness of deception versus, um, you know, beneficial information because there's a lot of well-intentioned people in the very system that has a lot of people that are just out for human exploitation or out for the money or are unconsciously maybe serving a dark agenda or maybe totally willingly serving that darker agenda. So I, I, I guess uh, the key for me is um, never lose connection with your intuition, really trust yourself, trust, uh, you know, trust yourself to the point where, um, you can consider what other people have to say, but uh, you don't lose yourself to it. And you're able to be a part of the greater conversation with an open enough mind to maybe correct a mistake or where you might not have quite had it figured out, but you're able to let go of any attachment to being right so that the greater conversation can produce breakthroughs and epiphanies. Um, so, you know, just, uh, I guess I would say just that staying flexible and humble, but true to yourself enough to participate in that larger uh, conversation um, with valuable insights and input um, that um, you're not pushing on people, but you're uh, just presenting as something that we can all chew on uh, to grow and learn together with mutual love and respect. <laughs> 
I don't know if that's the key code, but you know, love, love yeah. in the face of like, oh, I can't believe you chose to do that or what's wrong with you. It's just love overrides everything, universal love, that no matter what our differences are, the higher road is always, we, we never lose that love. Um, and, and if people decide that they want to break away or it's all too much, uh, that, that, that we love regardless. And we always have open arms for when they want to um, return to that vibration of love. Like, like I'm, we're, we're here when you're ready. You could go over there, but we're here when you're ready. Yeah. And is that to be right or wrong? Or like, I'm right. And when you come back, it's because you agree with me. It's, right. no, it's because that even though we're different, you don't choose to hate me or divide from me that we can just agree to disagree and still maintain a connection of love and respect. I love it. That's it. Trying to awesome. Move. Well, for me, I'm, I'm super excited about, and by the way, Laura's writing a book, you're writing a book. So yeah. And I know for sure that she's lit up about what she's doing because I, I, guess project, to yes, I forgot to mention that. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I'm really excited to see and read yours Rocco, because I just freaking love you and I love your content and like your heart and where you're going. And every time we speak, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. And I get energized. And so, yeah, but, um, I am actually doing, I'm in this season of a few things. I'm purging a lot. Um, you know, we're changing locations. And so I'm, I'm letting go of a lot of things, um, not just physical things, but people, um, you know, ideas, um, just clearing, you know, wounds, you know, really being, um, mindful of my schedule uh, because I am a Virgo also firstborn military all of that and so like play doesn't just accidentally happen for me so I realized I am going I, I started in November actually scheduling um, play just to be in you know to go and be in nature be by the water get in a boat go kayaking walk my dog you know, by the river, you know, whatever, but on purpose time off to, to connect back with source and me for that creative part that really just needs to be here or I go crazy. Uh, I haven't been super mindful of remembering to tap into those things that make me feel happy. So um, I'm, I'm actually writing um, my sixth book. Um, I, my last one was the science of miracles and just finished an audio back um, at the end of last year. And I had a dream two nights ago that I made a workbook out of it. And so I'm, you know, meeting with the designer and the publisher this week and just were really focusing on like, well, what is this going to look like? I choose to know. But in the meantime, throwing out all kinds of shit, giving it away, like really just lightening things. Um, in all aspects, whether, like I said, whether it's relationships, um, physical things, um, just, you know, healing that is happening, that I'm releasing some emotions and what have you. And it's, it's, it's going to be fun. And for anyone out there that forgets to play or doesn't make time to play, I strongly encourage you to get out in nature and, you know, go sleep outside under the stars if it's not too freezing cold where you are or, you know, walk in the snow and with bare feet and breathe, you know, deeply that cold air in this winter time right now and just really be alive and remember your strength in nature and the coating of the sun, sunbathing and, you know, just um, there's so much code and energy and just nature and being outside, literally hugging a tree and being walking on the earth and, you know, really connecting with that grounding part, because yeah, we could get all flighty and be spiritual, but ultimately we want to bring it back to the earth and like hook it in to this earth and create the earth to be the kingdom, you know, as, as in on earth, as it is in heaven. And that starts with us physically and then also what we're doing here. So that's what I'm up to. Amen. You gonna say something? I said awesome. <laughs> yes, that's it. Um, well, wow, beautiful. I feel like this is a nice uh caffeine espresso shot of high vibes for anybody's ear holes and awarenesses. And uh, yeah, please uh let us know 
just uh, was the easiest way to find you and find your work, maybe Instagram or something like that? Well, my, my website is cosmicgaia.org and I try and keep it updated. Uh, my YouTube's Laura Eisenhower and I'm on Facebook. A lot of these are accounts that have been shut down that I've gotten back, except the Facebook's a new account. Um, and yeah, just cosmicguide.org is the best place to find me and see what's going on. And yeah, that's it. Beautiful. And thanks so much, Rocco, for hosting this. It's been so much fun. I feel so uplifted talking to you guys and being with you. So thank you. Yes. Awesome. Beautiful. Thank you for everything that you are. And uh, Dr. Charno. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Laura and Rocco. And you guys can find me at swiftfire.org. Swift as in fastfire.org. Make sure .org, not .com. And um, I am on Instagram. I have a show on YouTube and a podcast. Um, just go to Dr. Charnel for those as well. Um, pretty much my handle everywhere is Dr. Charnel and or swiftfire.org. But um, I enjoy this kind of stuff so much. And I do miss conference speaking. I spoke at conferences for 20 years. And that part when we did like book signing or what have you, I could actually see people on the other side and like hug them and make eye contact. So if you guys are out there and, you know, I do miss hugging you. So, you know, connect with me somewhere and I'll send you a virtual hug wherever I'm sending you a virtual hug now. And I'd love to see your face through your profile or wherever and just be able to go, oh, you, okay, I see you. And I send you good, good vibes and love and hope to connect with everybody wherever out in the Google sphere of social media or something. <laughs> Exactly. Wherever in the meta you may be. Yes. Well, yeah. bl blessings to you both. Um, thanks for making the time today. Thanks for chatting. I'm sure this is a uh, just part dot 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 of a who knows how many part long series. So thanks for your time, your energy, your, your, your awareness, your crystallinity, and all that you bring, all that you are. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You as well. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Bye. Blessings. Talk soon. Thank you.